Well, you install PS Blocker NG as I you see it here in my install package by going here on the available packages and search for it. And let me actually do it because there's something I want to show you. PF Blocker NG and I click search and notice that there is a new version, version 3, that has more capabilities, you know, resources into the night per meter match. Uh, I chosen not to use the development version, but the previous one just to be on the safe side, and that's what I installed it. And that's most likely the reason why I see that newer version is available. This is either not fully installed or deprecated. Now, once you have installed that, you don't go into services like normal normally you do in PFSense, but you go on their firewall and you're going to have an entry called PF Blocker NG. And this thing has a ton of functionality. I'm going to be talking in this video series about GUIP, but this protects you against uh, uh, bad DNS resolvers and has some reputation list of bad IPs that you can use. And, but I'm again focusing just on GOIP. Now, you will need to enable it because by default it will be disabled. And this Chrome piece is uh, when you make changes to PF's blocker NG, they, those changes do not apply do not apply automatically. They will apply next time that you do the update. Um, and I have mine specified every eight hours. Uh, but every time that you make a changes, make sure that you remember to go here on update. And if you if you want to force the change, you will need to click here run. I'm actually going to do it now, and watch the logs, okay, for any error messages, particularly in terms of. Uh, the memory usage, if you are trying to be too greedy and trying to block too many countries with too many aliases, uh, you need to wait until this finishes uh, and, and, and everything is okay. And also give the system some time because if you make a change and then you test it and it, oh, it doesn't work, it doesn't block, well, you, this thing is, as you see, the list that it, that it uh, loads are massive and you need to give it time to deal with that. I'm going to pause the video until this finishes. So we did finish and I believe that this skill state is that when it, whenever you make a, ch uh, a change and if there is an, a session already running and uh, it will kill it. Uh, that, that matches you know the, the, what you're trying to block. Okay. After you've done that what you are expecting to see let me pause the video again when you go on the firewall rules, uh, you're going to find um, in, in your you're going to find actually several entries. But in the one entry, you, you'll find that it has put some rules at the very top of all the rules that you have. I'm covering mines in here, but uh, that puts incoming traffic. You notice that the source here is this uh, alias called Africa, and the destination is this one both on IPv4 and IPv6 uh, addresses uh, and that's what the those uh, the X and the hand actually means but you also need to check on OPT and LAN if you want to prevent even your devices from doing this from going into bad countries and again that's the definition a bad country is the definition that I made countries that harbor uh, uh, and you'll see why I chose Africa. It has nothing to do with bad countries being there. Uh, it really has to do with having a small country that I can find an IP address for testing this out. More on that on a separate video. But um, what you, if, if you want protection on your secure network, which I'm sure you do, <laughs> and on your, uh, as well as your insecure network, uh, you need to have those on those three enabled. And you need to see these as a result of that and covering the other rules that I have there. It might not be redundant to mention that if after you do this then you have some particular IoT device that is not working, now you know why and you need to make the determination of 
whether you need to allow traffic to that country or you know, or not, right? So if you go back to firewall PF blocker in G, you go to this uh, page that we were before. Now you understand this cron piece better. Let me actually scroll down. In here, you will need to put your MaxMine license. This is free, but you need to go into MaxMine with a valid email address and register yourself to get that key and to put it here. Again, this will allow the software when it updates to make sure that it know which IP address resides in which country. I explain all that in the introductory part of this video. Another important section is down here and this is where you need to actually notice that in here for the outbound I, own, I have one and OPT. Well, most likely you won't want to have them, all of them, if you want to protect the insecure land. Not you need to have these things uh, great. Let me actually pause the video and scroll down. So by default, it will only have one selected. This thing will be, you know, in blue when you click it and gray when it's selected. You need to make sure that if you want to protect your secure network, that, that this is like this for the outbound and for the inbound is also like that, right? And you can do block or, or reject it really. Uh, that's a firewall thing. I mean, w w when it's blocked, it doesn't tell anything to the incoming party that is trying to communicate. When you put reject, it's going to give a message. And that some people consider that's giving extra information that you don't want to give. So most people use block. Uh, so again, if you want that setup, that, that's actually perfectly fine. But make sure that you select the segments that you want to protect. And again, if you want to protect your insecure network as well, why not? Make sure that y your stuff will look like this here and there. I did not do that in the beginning and I found that very unintuitive. Uh, and notice that it's when you click here save, uh, remember that as it's telling you, reminding you here, you need to force the update or wait until the cron completes for that to take place. Okay. One thing I forgot to show up before is that when the update finishes, I forced it, notice that it's telling you that it has a hard limit in terms of the number of entries that you can have on the firewall. And by just country, uh, by just uh, doing this for one country alone, that I tested this with in Africa. And again, this country you'll see in the test section of this video series that it's not a bad country along. In fact, in fact it, it looks like a very nice country. Uh, uh, that that I used that because this is small and I could figure out an IP address I can use this test. But notice that only doing on that, it, it consumed 1,400 entries on that list. So you cannot block the world because you're going to go against this uh, hard limit. So with that small change that I did, notice that here when I go into OPT, and, and, and I will explain you why you also, because you may think uh, that was my original thinking. Well, if I'm blocking on the one, then everything inside is protected, and that's not the case. And I'm going to show you an article that Polo found for me that explain, explains you know, how the evaluation of the rules happen. And this is actually after he mentioned that to me is logical. Uh, if you find a match on a previous rule, like a hidden rule, like a, uh, like an implicit rule or like a NAT rule, then the rest are not evaluated. And that's why uh, I, I contacted Polo because I, in the test I was doing, it wasn't blocking what I was expecting to. And that was why. And you need to make sure that you have these on the networks, on, internal network that you want to protect. And this is the view on the insecure network that I also want to protect against that. In the next video, we're going to show how we tested this to make sure that it's doing what I want it to do.